All right, it's a brisk morning here in Potosi, Bolivia, the city 4,000 meters above sea level. And I'm feeling the impacts of that. I didn't sleep very well last night. Um, so my goal right now, before I even eat breakfast or do anything, is to get me some something to help with this altitude sickness. And one of the local remedies for that is coca tea. So I figured the best place to find that is in one of the local markets. So right now I'm looking for a taxi who can take me to one of the markets and then I'll walk around and see if uh, anyone there is selling coca tea. <laughs> Hola. Eh, taxi, sí? No? I swear that guy had a taxi sign on his car, but maybe I'm just that sick that I imagined it. Disculpa. Eh, ¿Cuánto sería para Mercado Chu? Chu ¿Cómo se llama? Chu, Chuquimia. Chuquimia, sí. Siete, ok. Buen día. ¿Sabes si allá se vende eh, mate de coca en hay, un lugar? Hay lugares donde meten, meten té, café, mates, todo tipo de mate. Ah, qué bueno. Ok. Sí. Sí, sí. Ok, bueno, gracias. ¿Y son uh, cinco? Eh, sí. ¿Siete? Gracias. Ok, chao. So I think this is the market, right? Let me cross the street without getting trampled. Now time to look for some tea. Super uneven ground, you gotta watch your ankles. I don't see any restaurant type places. Still, there's fruits over there, public washroom, none of which I'm looking for. What do they have here? Hola, ¿Cómo? no puedo grabar. Ah, tengo que pagar. I was not welcome in that shop. She told me I have to pay if I want to record. Call me a gringo. Did I just exit the market? I don't think, there's no way that was it. Let me get off the road. It's a statue of some famous, probably Bolivian soccer player over there. Though I don't know any Bolivian soccer players. Let's see, I found a restaurant here. Well, the, the restaurant owners told me in the market that they, they sell it, but I didn't see any. And I also feel very unwelcome there, but it is what it is. I'm on a mission to find the tea, so I won't stop till I get it. Aquí? Okay, gracias. Okay. All right, <clears throat> perhaps in here I can find some tea. And if not, I'll just ask around. Getting so many looks. Disculpa, uh, aquí se sirve uh, mate de coca? O no? Uh, ahora no, no hay? En todo el mercado? Bueno, gracias. Supposedly they only start serving it at 3, so maybe I'm early. Basically there is no mate de coca at this hour. For some reason they don't serve it in the mornings. At least in this market, so... 
I'm gonna have to go elsewhere to find it. Walking through that market, it's getting so many dirty looks. I guess the older Bolivian ladies, which I'm sure are very nice people once you get to know them, but they're not too fond of the, uh, the gringo, especially walking around with the camera. But I tried not to record them because I didn't want to provoke. I mean, not that I would get into a fight with a grandma, but just wanted to be respectful. It's also interesting how many people still wear masks here. Even though it's the middle of uh, 2023, people are still protecting themselves here. Anyways, I'll probably just catch a taxi back into the center. I don't feel too welcome walking through these parts. So, I'll go off onto a quieter street and uh, find me a taxi. Alright, well I ended up making my way back to the center accidentally. I mean, I wanted to come here, but I was just walking around looking for taxis. Before I knew it, I was back here. Anyways, look at this street, it's all lawyers. All this stuff that says abogados, so for some reason there's a bunch of lawyers here, another one there, all competing with each other on the same street. I guess people commit a bunch of crimes here and they need lawyers, I don't know. But uh, anyways, let's turn this corner and see if there's a restaurant that sells coco tea, coca tea. There's got to be at least one. This is the, the place in the world where there should be the most coca tea, it's Bolivia high altitude, but for some reason I'm struggling to find it. Alright, I finally found some cocoa tea. If you don't know what cocoa tea is, these are coca leaves, which are illegal in most countries except for Bolivia, Peru, maybe a few others, but most countries they're illegal in, and that's because this leaf is what's used to create cocaine, your favorite drug. I haven't tried this before, so let's see what it tastes like. Tastes like green tea, kind of. Even though I haven't drank that in a while. I've never tried cocaine, so I can't say if it tastes like that. One of the things that happens when you're at a higher altitude is, because there's less oxygen in the air, you start to feel lightheaded, you get headaches, dizzy, nauseous. Because there's less oxygen, your heart needs to pump harder, your lungs need to work harder. So with your body working harder, you end up feeling tired. And that's why a lot of people struggle for the first few days when they come to a new place that's at higher altitude. So cocoa tea is one of the traditional treatments for altitude. Some of the other treatments are to just get out of the city and go to a lower altitude place. If it's a real big emergency, you could go to the hospital and get oxygen. Or you can take pills, which I was taking before, but then I stopped taking them because I thought I was fine. It turns out I was not. If you watch basketball, you might have heard that any team that goes to play in Denver usually struggles with breathing and, well, not struggles with breathing, but they find it a little bit harder to play and run. But their altitude is only, I think, 1,800 meters above sea level, whereas here in Potosi, it's 4,000 meters above sea level, so about two and a half times more. So you can imagine how much harder it is to just exist here, let alone run around and walk up and down the hilly streets. Now the coca tea is considered to be a good treatment because it, it's a stimulant, because cocaine is a stimulant. So we'll see if I feel anything from it, but I doubt it. That's why this is a traditional treatment um, and it also helps with nausea. So it's interesting how in one part of the world this is medicine treatment, your morning uh, coffee, whereas in other parts of the world it's a dangerous drug. And when the Spanish conquistadores first arrived, they actually banned uh, coca leaves. But they quickly reverted that decision when they saw all the miners and all the workers that they were forcing into hard labor weren't able to work as well as they would with coca leaves. So if that's truly the case, then this should be able to wake me up if that's what it did to the workers. And if you're anything like me, you might be wondering how this leaf ends up becoming white powder cocaine. So I looked into that and supposedly you drench these leaves, like they're drenched right now, but into gasoline usually, and then you dissolve, you uh, evaporate the gasoline out, and you're left with a paste, and then you mix that paste in with acid, I think sulfuric acid or something, and from that you can create a next version of the paste, 
which somehow there's another step that they use to turn it into powder. And then they usually cut it and add other stuff like baking soda or whatever to add to the appearance without having to use a bunch of leaves to create a bunch of cocaine. Because from what I know, I think you need 450 to 600 kilograms of these leaves. So you can imagine how many leaves that is because these are extremely light just to create one kilogram of cocaine. So hence why people usually mix things in like fentanyl or whatever else to uh, add more to the compound. Anyways, I'm gonna finish enjoying this and that's probably the end of this video.